Revolution Radio proudly presents, live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia, it's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. Um, anyway, so without further ado, let me tell you a bit about my guest today. Uh, I'm really happy to have him on. Uh, he has been on the show before, actually, before we moved over here to Revolution Radio. Uh, Tony is the author of 10 self-empowerment books. He is the co-founder of the Worldwide and Tenders of the Highest Good Community. Uh, his widely acclaimed Vision Alignment Project re recently surpassed 1.6 million alignments. He has produced three full-length videos, over 100 YouTubes for the Intenders channel, and has appeared on numerous TV and radio shows, including Coast to Coast. Um, his books include the Intenders Handbook, The Highest Light Teachings, The Code, Ten Intentions for a Better World, The Law of Agreement, Get What You Want, The Art of Making and Manifesting Your Intentions. And just now, recently, he's released uh, What You Need to Know Now, The Lee Ching Messages. I happen to have his last two books, and I've been keeping the Get What You Want book in my briefcase everywhere, every time I teach a class for reference. So I'm really happy to have you on the show today, Tony Burroughs. Welcome. Thank you, Bernard. It's an honor to be here. And uh, it, like I said, it's been it's been a couple of years since you've been here, and I'm sure many people have forgotten our our discussion by now, unless they're listening to the archives uh, of as of late. Um, Tony, I when I first heard about the intention process, I was very excited. I um, I, I felt a little connection with. Um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, the, the secret was still pretty popular back then a couple of years ago and the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And uh, as as a, as a practicing pagan, I, I kind of incorporated into my, you know, my spell work. <laughs> so uh, there was a big connection for me uh, with the with the uh, the theory and the practice of of intentions. Now, what in your words, uh, what is an intention? What is the intention process? Well, uh, initially, when we uh, asked ourselves that same question, we looked it up in the dictionary, and it, and it covered it pretty well. It said that an intention was a moving toward. So we realized if we're making an intention, we're moving toward that which we desired, Bernard. And, and uh, um, so that's what we found to be true as well, because we, we've seen so many people make and manifest their intentions over the years that uh, it's clear that this is a... Uh, a uh, um, a process by which people can manifest their dreams and desires and, uh, and doing it uh, by using their intentions. And what we tell people is to set your course every day, every morning, to get up in the morning and, and to uh, uh, make your, say your intentions or your prayers or your affirmations, to, that they all work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and we found that the people who do that uh, after 20 years of, of watching this, 22 years of watching this intention process in action, uh, that uh, the people who do that, why everything comes easier for them, they get the things they want in life, uh, life goes smoother. And uh, as opposed to those who get up in the morning and have a cup of Starbucks and hit the ground running, why uh, anything goes, anything, anything can happen. So uh, we've uh, basically uh, discovered that or rediscovered that if you give a direction unto your life, uh, early in the day, that your day proceeds entirely differently than it would otherwise. Well, I, I, I can relate to that, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, now, as far as how it works, is there a way to explain the, you know, the energetics of it, the, 
quantum mechanics of it. You know, we hear so much about, you know, thoughts are energy and, and uh, we hear so much about, you know, what you put out returns. What is your take on what makes the intention work? Well, uh, I, I can't tell you that. I, I don't really know. all Because when you go to make an intention, you really never know the how. You don't know how it's going to come to you. If you if you do try and project the how, then you're short circuiting the, the magical workings of the universe, yeah. and uh, you don't know the when or the where or with the with who or any of that. You just know that it'll work, and so uh, and again we've seen it uh, work so many times, and I've written so many manifestation stories or intender stories in our books that uh, uh, we just uh, the proof is in the pudding. And but as far as the the mechanics of it, me, I'm more of a feeler myself. I'm not as scientifically oriented as some, and I really just have to tell you that it works, but I don't know how. Uh, and that's a great answer, actually. Thank you. Um, Tony, how did you get involved with this? What what drew you to this, uh, I guess, this path that you're on, and, and a wonderful path it is? Okay. For me, Bernard, it started... Uh, Gosh, back in uh, the rainforests of Kona, Hawaii, uh, in the uh, 70s and 80s, I was very fortunate to uh, have a, uh, a farm back, an avocado farm back then in, uh, that overlooked the whole Kona coast. And, and, but I didn't have the slightest idea how to run a, uh, run a farm or build a house or fix a truck or plant a garden or do all the things that you need to do to, to uh, uh, have a self-sustaining piece of property. And I ran into a fellow who we became good friends and he moved on to the property and it turned out he was a master. He was my first teacher. I've had two uh, major uh, teachers in my life and and his name was BJ and I wrote about him extensively in my books and tall, lanky fellow, uh, spitting image of St. Germain. <laughs> and I'm not sure he wasn't, quite frankly, because uh, the masters, they can take on any guys uh, so that you're comfortable with them so that they can get their message across to you. So uh, uh, one day, uh, one of the things that was a, a key uh, experience in my life that um, had a, a great effect upon me was we were sitting out under uh, uh, some trees one day, having um, taken a break. We were taking a break from chainsawing some um, leggy avocado trees pruning and and he looks over at me and uh, we were just sitting in the in the rainforest just uh, swatting mosquitoes and sweating and finishing the last of a thermos of Kona coffee about 11 in the morning and he says to me he says Tony he says you know the difference between me and you and Bernard I gave him a glib answer I said uh, well you're taller <laughs> and he, he gave me in Hawaii what we call the sting he just scans at me and he says, that's not it at all. And uh, uh, I said, well, okay, BJ, I said, what is the difference between me and you? And he's talking about himself. He says, I'm secure. And he uh, didn't say the next three words, which would have been, and you're not. Mm. And so uh, he says, yeah, I'm secure. He says, if I need anything, I use the laws of manifestation to, to have the things I desire in my life to come to me uh, easily. And uh, he said, you, on the other hand, if you need something in your life, you, you've got to figure out how to go get the money and how to go uh, perhaps get a job, take out a loan, do all the stuff that you have to do. And, and he said, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But he said, once you get good at using the laws of manifestation, you won't do that anymore. And that got my attention, Bernard. He said, uh, um, he, he went on to say that uh, uh, if I needed something, I had to go get the money to do it. And uh, if he needed something, he used the laws of manifestation and it just showed up. So that was my first introduction. And he even went on uh, further to say that uh, he measured his definition of security by how good of a manifester he was. And me, I'm measuring my definition of security by how much money's in my bank account or in my wallet at any given time. And, and by the way, if uh, my bank account got a little lower, my wallet got a little thin, uh, I start to panic, he tells me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I realized at that point that if I wanted to, uh, if my, wanted to take my life to the next level and, uh, uh, and get proficient. I wanted to get proficient at manifesting, not just fiddle around with it or check it out or, or play with it, but get good at getting that which uh, I desired to come into my life. And uh, 
and my life from that point on, uh, this was several years before we even started the intenders, but from that point on, my life uh, became a, uh, I had to integrate these teachings into my life if they were going to be worthwhile because uh, so many teachers out there were channeling things and so forth, and that's good. I do some of that, but uh, but uh, ultimately, if a person's teachings are going to be uh, valid and, and authentic, why they have to put them to practice in their own life. And mm -hmm. when my life has been a, a, a testimony to integrating these principles into my life and, and just trusting. I've never really taken a, a nine to five job in my adult life. Uh, I've always just trusted that everything I needed, uh, most of what I wanted would, would uh, come to me uh, just by intending it. And, and you know what, Bernard, so far, so good. That's wonderful. <laughs> I, I think I'm right behind you there, Tony. I'll tell you, it's, uh, it, it, it is very hard to, um, to integrate the principles in, into your life. Uh, so many people, I guess, and maybe, maybe this is probably one of the uh, shortcomings that we have with those that are either on the intended, intender's path or beginning the intender's path, is that is that that insecurity that 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 uh, having maybe I don't want to say having faith I don't know if that's the the right term but the knowing that's mm -hmm. going to happen and I feel that's where a lot of people get stuck. Do you find that to be pretty common? I I do, and uh, what I'm seeing just in my own uh, uh, friends uh, and circles and so forth is that. Um, we're all learning to trust at a much deeper level than we've ever had to trust before. And, and uh, you can call it faith, trust, uh, or whatever, but what, what goes on is that uh, uh, people need to put this practice in, put this uh, process into practice. That, uh, and you do that by just making an intention, and you'll see a, a very short order, it'll manifest for you. I mean, because you know that in the old days, uh, it, you could be drumming your fingers forever and thinking, when is this going to come to me? But nowadays, you can make an intention, walk out the back door and practically trip over whatever it is you were looking to manifest. So yeah. um, so uh, uh, we start out with just testing it and, and seeing that you get a win and you test it again and you get another win and you begin to build some trust in the process. And after a while, that trust turns into confidence and turns into knowing and and uh, and you get really strong with it. Um, but uh, it starts uh, for people just uh, just testing it and 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 building their level of trust and uh, in the face uh, of all of the consensus reality mainstream belief systems, which tell you you can't do this stuff. Mm -hmm. That uh, that uh, the the one thing that was uh, that, that is missing in our everyday mainstream uh, status quo reality is the information that our thoughts do create our future. And, uh, and so most people don't really know that. And once they do um, start to integrate that information, start to put it to work in their lives, um, they realize that um, it, uh, it does work. And yet they, they weren't taught about it in schools. You know, we should have been taught about our thoughts create our future back in first grade, along with Run, Spot, Run, and See Dick and Jane. And and uh, but they didn't do that. And here all of us are now uh, looking for something else because so many people are becoming disenchanted with the status quo. So many people are, um, you know, you were talking about it at the top of the hour with uh, Treva, the, how the. Uh, you know the the politics just aren't working anymore, and so so many people are are. Uh, um, frustrated with uh, realizing that um, that they can that the the people who said that they were going to represent them are not really doing it, and so where do we turn when that happens? And where we turn is to look to find our own freedom within ourselves, mm -hmm. and because it's there, and we we can find freedom within ourselves uh, if we begin to. Uh, but in order to do that, we got to get proficient at manifesting, become a, a conscious creator, a conscious co-creator. And, and uh, that's why these teachings have, um, are blossoming, because, again, more and more people are looking for something else. And that something else is not to be found in the mainstream, it's to be found inside us. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And, and even within those that want change, uh, there, uh, you said it, uh, you just said it, that uh, we... 
I don't know if you want to call it our ego or the way that we've been programmed and raised by the media and our friends that, that this stuff is, you know, hooey fluey, new agey or, or witchcraft or Satanism or, you know, what not that this stuff doesn't work or that it's evil or, or whatnot. And there just seems to be, you know, just like you said, the social conditioning uh, that I don't know if it's um, the fear to put it into practice. And then those of us who decide to put it into practice, maybe we still have some of that social conditioning that kind of, like you said, short circuits the, the process. Um, uh, do you have any advice for anybody that's going through something like that where they just they want to believe, but something within them is like, oh, no, but, you know, I was taught it doesn't work. Yeah, I, I do. Um, the one thing that we learned right early in our uh, uh, first intender circle was to uh, put this thing called the highest good clause into our intentions. And you know what it is, but for the sake of our audience uh, listeners out there, uh, it's uh, we say that in order for our, any of our intentions to manifest, that they must serve the highest and best good of the universe, ourselves and everyone everywhere. And uh, that is what the secret left out actually and it's a uh, it's like um, an insurance policy because if if whatever it is you're looking to manifest isn't for your highest good if you put that clause in there it won't manifest and the things that are for your highest good and for the highest good of everyone concerned will manifest so um, a, a lot of people watched the secret and they saw that uh, these folks are manifesting but then uh, when they tried it themselves, it wasn't working so much for them. And uh, the, the reason for that, and it will work, but the, the, the highest good so is uh, coming forth into people's lives at this time. And people are starting to realize that um, if, they, if they can't get a grasp on anything else, the highest good is like an anchor that they can fall back on and uh, know that uh, uh, their words, that if they're indeed their words create their uh, reality, if their words um, create their future, then uh, this highest good clause makes it easy for people to begin to integrate these teachings into their lives. Uh, and it and it helps it work better. It just does. So for those who are just uh, stepping into all of this uh, and, and realizing that um, they want to become empowered, they want to get what they want, <laughs> you know, they, they uh, look to, uh, uh, they've got a calling or they've got uh, they've got dreams they've got desires we all do that uh, the, the trick is to manifest those in the face of that social conditioning you're talking about mm -hmm. and that social conditioning will ridicule ostracize do everything it can do to undermine the uh, the, the true teachings because uh, or the teachings that uh, bring us our freedom and bring us the truth um, uh, because it, uh, they're going to undermine it simply because uh, they can't control people who, who get their own freedom. And so, uh, th and that is politics. Politics is the art of controlling people. And those, many, many people are realizing that that isn't working anymore and they don't want to be controlled. And so uh, they begin to look elsewhere. And uh, again, in the face of the ostracism and the ridicule and all of that and all the sabotage that's been done on the, on the sitcoms on TV. And mm -hmm. I mean, uh, all, all of uh, the uh, truest teachings on the planet are being sabotaged subtly on the TV over and over and over again. And people are still in the midst of that conditioning and allowing themselves to be conditioned uh, just by simply watching the TV, and it especially hurts our kids. And the, the, when you look at it from a little bit uh, uh, removed point of view, you realize that we're complicit in our own oppression. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, we're supporting the very systems that are uh, working, that are not going to give us the results we're looking for. Yeah. So it's time for more and more people to wake up, and we are. And that's why these teachings uh, about the intention process, the intender circles and the vision alignment project and the code and all these things are being brought out to the world at this time uh, as a, uh, an alternative to the status quo. Well, I couldn't agree more, Tony. 
Uh, with that being said, you know, you brought up some really important, important um, issues. Uh, I do feel that, you know, we are being, uh, our, our consciousness has been oppressed, whether it be through the media, through the news, through organized religion, uh, through, you know, social engineering, etc., as, as you mentioned. Uh, and with that being said, um, I have found, and I'm wondering where, where, how you feel about this. I have found that even within the circles of uh, spiritual teachings, within the circles of law of attraction, within the circles of uh, of, in, of creating intentions or spell work or manifestation work, whatever uh, whatever title we want to call it, there seems to be some self sabotaging in the sense that we are constantly being told to focus only on we want and when we are let's say distracted by something we don't like you know like a like a global injustice or you know children being murdered in gaza or or something like that everyone's like oh you're being negative you're being negative and 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 i'm wondering where does this all fit in Uh, we posted an article recently called the elephant in the room with the law of attraction and, and like people were just so afraid to, to 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 look at bad things or think about bad things that they're ignoring the the bad things. And what's your take? Where's the balance? Where's the middle way in all of this? The middle way is for us to uh, get a firm grasp on what it is we really do want to create for ourselves, and then uh, and then monitor ourselves to see it, uh, to 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 be more vigilant of what it is we're creating with our everyday thoughts and words. So uh, when we get uh, uh, somebody tells us in the media or somebody tells us in the school room or somebody tells us a, a good friend walks up and tells us that here's the way the world works, we have to run it by a filter. And the filter is, is if I integrate this thought or this belief system into my reality, is it going to give me the results I'm looking for? Does it serve me? Mm-hmm. And uh, and if it does serve me, then I'll run with it. But a lot of the stuff coming out of the mainstream isn't serving anybody except those who are putting it out. And in the long run, it isn't, isn't even serving them either because it's not going to give those who are uh, doing the sabotaging and the ridiculing and the ostracizing the results they're looking for either. They just think it is. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. Um, so... With that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to filter this in my own filter. What you're trying to say is that if, for example, um, I, feel, I feel a strong connection with um, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement, for, for example, uh, I'm very concerned. I'm not going to say I'm concerned. It, it, I have evidence that you know the, the uh, national police uh, forces throughout the nation have been pretty oppressive against minorities and people of color and someone as someone who is hispanic and native american uh of course i can relate to that and uh so if i see something i'll say something in other words mm-hmm. to create change not to ridicule the police not to ridicule what's happening mm-hmm. but my intention is to bring it out into, uh, out of the shadows so it's no longer something that we're afraid to talk about, kind of like what you said. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, they ridicule us when we talk about these things. Mm-hmm. So is, is that going about it the right way, where, where it, uh, as an intender, I'm intending to bring something out of the shadow and hopefully create a more positive future? Or is it being negative because I'm, I'm speaking about uh, police hurting people of color? Yeah, whatever. It's it's uh, it's an interesting two-edged sword there, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm really careful with that one nowadays. I found that uh, that it really I'm only here to extend that which I want to really be creating for myself. In other words, I just stay on the positive this because if you go into the negative, if you go into the defensive stuff or what we call the negative stuff or the uh, the stuff that isn't going to give us the results we're looking for um, or the programs that are not working and so forth, if you put your attention on them, well, you're just reinforcing them. And so that's okay. the way thoughts. We have a commercial break. Uh- and now back to your host. 
Bernard Alvarez. And welcome back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. The the world's number one listener supported internet radio station. Please make sure to support us over at freedomslips.com. As well, I'd like to let everybody know that uh, you can also follow my work, uh, not only my radio work, but my YouTube work, my classes, my courses, my articles, everything I've been doing over the last, geez, 10 years, it's been almost, over at bernardalvarez.com. I'm very happy to say that I am now, uh, um, am now offering uh, personal one-on-one consultations to support you in your awakening if you need some spiritual counseling or guidance, uh, please check out bernardalvarez.com. And uh, with that, I saw, Tony, that you recently are now uh, taking consultations as well. Is that correct? I do some, yes. I do some. Mm -hmm. And they can contact me through uh, my website at intenders.com, I-N-T-E-N-D-E-R-S.com. Oh, good, good. I, I, sometimes it's just easier to talk to the person than just read the articles, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, Tony, um, we were talking, uh, we have been talking about the intention process, and your, your new book is What You Need to Know Now, the Li Ching Messages. Uh, what was your intention in bringing this, uh, this forward for everybody? Well, it was... Uh... Um, excuse me, a culmination of uh, 22 years of work uh, with conscious manifesting and seeing the results we were getting. And and, uh, uh, and it started uh, with our original intender circle. And we were, uh, we'd been in it for uh, about six weeks. And then we realized that one of the ladies in our uh, uh, original group of four uh, in the intenders back in the big island of Hawaii, um, was a very clear messenger. And so, uh, and oh, oh, we seem to have Skype problems. Tony, we, we can't hear you right now. I don't know if you moved your a laptop or anything. <laughs> Hello, is anybody there? Yes, there we go. We got you back. Okay, Sorry about good. Look, Skype okay. just turned yellow on me. Uh, I'm okay. sorry, go, go on. What were you saying about the... So, and uh, so we were, we had guidance from the beginning, and uh, the guidance came in the form of my second teacher. His name was Li Ching, and over a twenty year period, we we uh, collected. I was keeping track of all my conversations with all the spiritual guidance sessions. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and all of the uh, the talks we had, and those uh, they were such gems. They were so positive and so uplifting. All these messages he was giving us over all this period of time to help us fine tune our intention process. Why well, I saved them and I put them into a book twenty years later. Oh, and wow. uh, uh, so it's a, again, it's a culmination of all the the highest points that we learned along the way as we uh, integrated the intention process into our lives and. And uh, I know, Lee, just as a fun story to give you a feel for Li Ching, uh, I had told you the the tale of uh, me and BJ in the uh, in the rainforest, and he tell he was telling me that uh, uh, that uh, my, I'd measured my security by how much money I had, and he measured his security by uh, how good of a manifester he was, and and. Uh, uh, Li Ching would probably put that in a different light, Bernard. He'd say something like, uh, um, uh, you know, there may be times when you don't have any money, but you always have your intentions. Mm. <laughs> and so that caught my attention. And uh, the the sayings like that, uh, it's, there's 500 of them. It's 500 page book of uh, you open it to any page. It's an oracle or a bibliomancy, just like my last book. And uh, and it'll tell you what you need to know in the moment. So that's why we call it what you need to know now. And uh, and I keep it by my desk uh, and every morning open it up and it gives me direction for my day with these uh, sweet messages that we uh, were, were blessed to receive over all these years. Uh, well, I, I love it. I love the book. And I, I have since I've received it, I've been bibliomancing, bibliomancing it myself. Uh, explain to everybody what, what bibliomancy is. How, how... 
well, bibliomancy is uh, Latin for book magic, uh -huh. and it's uh, it's really just opening a book to any page and having it tell you what you need to know in the moment. And most people, and everybody can do it, and all books will work in this way, yeah. but uh, most people don't believe that. So we put out a book that uh, uh, makes it easy for them to uh, to believe it, actually. And, and, of course, if you open it to any page, uh, it works, as you found out. And yeah. Uh, everybody who's uh, who's bought the book so far has found out that it, it works because it, the highest good is in place there. And and, and I want to go back to where we were before commercial break just yeah. for a minute because it works into this. And um, we, we were talking about uh, do we want to bring up the negative in order to accentuate the positive, so to speak. Right. And what we're finding and what this book, this new book, is just totally positive. It does not bring up the negative. And we found that if we bring up the negative, then we are actually, uh, that's a thought, like any other thought, uh, if we're talking about or thinking about something that we don't want to be creating or something that's going on in our lives that uh, we don't want to be adding to. Um, why? Uh, and that thought will work its way toward the surface of our experience like any other thought. So what we're finding after all these years is to is to just stay on the positive side of everything and because what we say is what we get and, and it's it's very literal so yeah. if we're talking about uh, let's just take an example here um um, the defense. Most of us believe that we've got to have a, a system of defense or a department of defense. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet we wouldn't have a department of defense if we already felt safe. And, or if we, uh, if we didn't think that there was an enemy out there uh, out to get us. Right. And, uh, so in, in envisioning enemies, we are actually creating them out to get us. And that's how this whole crazy system got into gear, because yeah. we've uh, bought into the idea that uh, that there are enemies and people out there out to get us. And what we're saying in the intenders is to find the positive side of all that, because if you keep believing in enemies, then you're creating them. I mean, uh, the a defensive position just uh, just in truth uh, automatically invites an attack. In other words, if you if you. Uh, if you're taking a, you wouldn't take a defensive position unless you were envisioning yourself potentially being attacked. And that's a thought. Right. And that thought will work its way into our world. Uh, and so there's so many of those uh, instances where we're, we've been um, programmed to uh, look at the negative side. And what we found, again, after 22 years of working with intentions and manifesting consciously, is that it doesn't pay serve us to put our attention on the things that aren't going to give us the, the outcomes that we're looking for. So we just stay on the positive side and the positive side of the defense issue, for instance, or in the germ issue or in the health issue or in uh, uh, any, uh, anything that uh, tells us that we could be uh, attacked by something outside of us. Why we go back to the positive side and the positive side is, Hey, I'm safe. Hey, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> and and the problem uh, or the challenge that comes forth with that is most people don't believe it. They'll fall back into, uh, oh yeah, that guy's out to get me, or this this could happen, or we're in danger, and and that's what's given rise to all the patriotism and all of the uh, yeah. the fighting and so forth. And and uh, let's let's face it, because I was listening to the commercials between the uh, the break, uh, and uh, and it was advocating fighting, and fighting isn't love. Fighting is not going to give us the results we're looking for. Love right. is what's going to give us the results we're looking for. That's very caring about. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I say that's very true. And um, you know, if anything, um, a great intention for someone that is is so involved in the divisive nature of the us versus them mentality, mm -hmm. I, I guess would be I intend I. I love all beings. I intend, I have compassion for all beings. I intend that we are in a beautiful world. You know, we are living in a beautiful world and that I intend, I don't live in fear. I intend, I don't react to fear. And I think that maybe that's where, where some of this, uh, the shortcomings in the intention process come. And it seems that, and I think it's fair to say that we are, 
there's so much fear out there, and it's really culminated. Uh, I, I always call it the ugly zit of humanity. It's like it's it's been popped, and now it needs to heal. You know, mm-hmm. it's so it's been brought to the forefront so much by media, by you know, organized religion and and our and our nationalistic beliefs, etc. That now it's kind of like you know, at least it's out there, and people understand that this is you know, it's not working. And maybe now they can embrace something like this, you know, the beautiful intention work that we're talking about here. Right, right. And and so with that in mind, Bernard, what we set out to do when we uh, um, originated, when we created the intenders, uh, even though at the time we we didn't know we were doing it, it was many years before we realized we were living our calling and and doing what we came here to do, is that we set out to create models or templates and the first model was the intention circle, yeah. uh, a means for people to come together and manifest in groups under the umbrella of the highest good. And it, it works because there, are, if you go to the Intenders website, you'll see there's a directory there with intention circles all over the world. There's thousands of them now. And and, um, and then we also uh, went to... Um, uh, set up a, a template or a blueprint for g- daily living, and that's why I wrote the code, which is Ten Intentions for a Better World, which is what uh, the, uh, the Get What You Want book accentuates. It's yeah. uh, uh, it's built around the code, and the code is a guideline for daily living, as good as any anyone out there. You know, as good as the Ten Commandments. I know, I know <laughs> I'll get cards and letters on that, but uh, <laughs> it the Ten Commandments itself is written in the negative: Thou shalt not. And so it's bringing up all the negative side. It's just, it, it doesn't work. It really barely, it barely functions anymore. If it was working, we wouldn't have the world we're, we're living in. That's not very and So uh, <laughs> the code itself is a, a positive uh, uh, guideline for daily living. And then another model that came to me in a dream a few years back is the Vision Alignment Project. It's a free program that you can find on intenders.com or on visionalignmentproject.com. And uh, where we uh, send out our visions for our ideal world. In other words, uh, if we if we begin to put our attention on that which we desire to create for ourselves, then it has to manifest for us. And so I started writing visions on every subject I could imagine. Just a couple of paragraphs uh, about uh, uh, the better treatment of the dolphins, or bringing the highest good into the business arena, or bringing conscience into our lives and bringing mercy into our lives and all the things that uh, will will give us uh, outcomes we're looking for and and i ended up writing 400 of these little visions and uh, in the dream i was told to uh, create a website call it the vision alignment project.com and um, put a uh, uh, and have a way for people to sign up where they could get a vision a couple times a week in their email well, that they could hit a big green yes, I align with this vision. Uh, and uh, what we've uh, uh, what we found out is that it works because we've just uh, as of two weeks ago we went over two million alignments wow. of people hitting this uh, yes button uh, two million times because it's a way for people to feel like they're making a difference to make a difference oh. it, uh, because in the alignment with these visions. Uh, these positive, positive visions uh, that we can have if we really believe we can have them, uh, that we are in the alignment of them, we are consciously and actively contributing to the creation of them. So the Vision Alignment Project is is a model or a blueprint for what we can have. And it's a We've been taught that a limited thing. We we can only have a world where we've got two political parties, for instance. Well, how crazy is that? Yeah. You know, and we're just limiting ourselves on every corner, and we've been limited uh, by the all of the um, consensus reality beliefs that we bought into, and yet here we find ourselves at this point in our world where everything uh, isn't working, is is barely functioning, and uh, and it's time for something to change. And what's got to if uh, if we don't have a vision for what it's going to change into, then it stays the same, Bernard. Yeah. So that's, that's why the Vision really Alignment Project is uh, uh, becoming is so popular, actually. I, and I love it. I think it's a great, great project, Tony. And that's been one of the one of the biggest uh, shortcomings that we've had as a 
uh, well, for me, I call it the spiritual activist movement. We're trying to create a better world, but there really were no no visions of what that world is going to look like. And uh, yeah. and something like this is wonderful and very helpful and a great tool. Um, and it's free. Uh, and it's free. <laughs> <Yeah. Yes. laughs> We've got about oh six or seven minutes left. And mm-hmm. for our, let's say our listeners have never tried doing an intention or, uh, or really don't know how to wrap their head around it. Uh, what are the, what are the basic steps that a person uh, could do in order to form a, an intention or how do you do your intentions in the morning? Are there steps that you take? Um, I come from the heart myself and, and I found that that works best for me. Some people like to write them out. Some people, uh, um, just, uh, um, say the same ones over and, uh, and that's okay if you don't do it more than once a day, because if you're saying your intentions more than once a day, it implies that you're running some doubt yeah. and you need to look at that. You, you don't really believe it's going to manifest. So, uh, so we say, tell the people, just make your intentions once a day and, uh, um, and trust that, uh, the universe will comply. The universe will rally to your side simply because your thoughts do create your future. It, 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 it is a immutable law that uh, our thoughts create our experiences. Our thoughts create our uh, our, our reality. And so, uh, I start out with uh, with whatever's in my heart for the day. What do I need? I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm going to Denver tomorrow, so I'll, I'll intend that I have a, a a great trip, a nice, smooth, safe trip to Denver. That I have a lot of fun. That everything I need along the way comes to me, and. Uh, uh, and I just take whatever I need in my life at the time. And then I also make some intentions for the world at large, too. Uh, I intend that we're living in peace, for instance. Right. And I intend that every child born on this planet, from the minute that they're born to the minute they leave, that they know that they are honored and loved and cared for by every other being who lives on this planet. And, that, uh, and I might intend that... Um, uh, just one of my favorite intentions is that every everyone born on this planet gets to live out their life uh, to its entire natural fullness, to the total end of their life without having been interfered with by anyone else uh, who uh, lives on or off this planet, yeah. you see. So uh, you just come from your heart. And, and then I always put that highest good clause in there, you know, that in order for these intentions to manifest... Uh, they must serve the highest and best good of the universe, ourselves and myself and everyone everywhere. And then I say, so be it. And I say, so it is. And then I say, it is done. And the reason I say it is done is because what we have found, and for those of you listening out there here today, um, what I'm about to tell you is a culmination in four words of everything that uh, will work for you if you can if you can put it to, to uh, use in your own life. And, and so... Um, what we have found is that to see the end result from the beginning, in other words, in making an intention, start with the end result. And, and here's the, the four words, envision only positive outcomes. Envision only positive outcomes. If you do that, your life will turn around. Our world will turn around. Everything will get better for all of us. And and it's it's very true. And and for so many people, we've been caught in the cycle of you know. And I, I love this meme that goes around. I think we have it on our Facebook page. It says, uh, "Worrying is praying for something negative to happen." And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's interesting that you mention that because so many of us, that's the place we're at. Yep. in our lives yep. we're we're realizing that we've been creating uh, outcomes that haven't really worked for us we put our attention on institutions and regimes and and other people who did not have our best interests at heart and now uh, we're coming to a point where we've learned that what we think is what we get and if we think positive then we'll get positive but if we dwell on that negative if we dwell on that undesired result then we're going to keep getting more of that so it's just time for us to envision only positive outcomes and, and that is a, a 
a process in itself. You may not get it overnight. <laughs> it takes some practice, and it also takes hanging out with other people who are also staying awake uh, to that piece of information that uh, uh, because we can keep each other awake. Because uh, when I hear a, a friend say something like, uh, oh, I, uh, uh, something that they wouldn't want to manifest in a jillion years, then I might say, <clears throat> hey, you might not want to say that that way because it just doesn't serve anybody. It, it won't give you the outcomes you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a nice way of saying it, that is the way you say <laughs> <laughs> um, Tony, does visualization play a role in intention? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's a, it's a key factor. You, uh, in other words, uh, if you're going to be making an intention, you want to as cl visualize as clearly as you can the final outcome, like we were just saying. At the same time, leave yourself open, leave some breathing room, uh, because uh, as we said at the, at the beginning of the program, that we don't really and can never know the how, the, the when, the where, the with whom, uh, but you can visualize those things uh, to your ideal, and then uh, uh, you give them the best opportunity of coming into creation in that way. But don't be surprised if uh, if the person you uh, were envisioning to uh, be in relationship with or have a, a contract with or, or meet, uh, if they look a little different, right. or if they act a little different than you expected, or if you meet at a, you met them at a different time where they just happened to walk, walk up instead of uh, you know, sometimes uh, it's interesting how being open to receive is so much of this process as well, Bernard. And, yeah. and so many of us are closed off to receiving and we think the things that are going to come as, come to us via uh, certain channels. And yet we sabotage ourselves when we when we do that. It's time for us to, to open the door so that uh, we uh, receive from both expected and unexpected sources. Absolutely. And, and what a perfect place uh, to end our, our talk today, uh, receiving from expected and unexpected sources. I couldn't agree more, Tony. Uh, so tell us, um, where can people get a hold of you, find your books, uh, etc.? Right. Uh, Intenders.com. And I'll be coming to the uh, East Coast in uh, over the holidays and doing workshops there. So you can get in touch with me through uh, the website. Intenders.com.